linear functions are often a really great way to model a uh, real life situation. However, that means that it becomes our job to actually find the equation that will represent a given situation. For uh, a lot of these problems, a, a linear model is an appropriate type of a relationship. Remember when you think of linear equations, we think of the equation y equals mx plus b. We can also think of this in function notation. Remember, we can replace y with f of x. It says we have a function where x is my input variable, and I can follow the rule mx plus b in order to get the output of my function. So as we go through and take a look at problems, let's take a look at example number one here. Here we have uh, Jordan is saving money for emergencies or a trip to Europe. She has $420 under her mattress and is adding $60 to it each week. In this particular case, if you wanted to try to write an equation or to think about how you could figure out how much money that uh, Jordan had at any given point in time, she started with that $420. And then we could multiply uh, 60 by the number of weeks that she was working. Um, and saving money, because that's how much she would save each week. And if we added that together, we'd get the total amount of money that she had um, in, had accumulated up to that point in time. So in terms of how you think about things, this notice that this 60 here is talking about how often things, are, it's giving us a rate of how often things are changing. Um, and this here is the starting value that she had at the beginning of saving her saving adventure. So when we look at, this is definitely a linear equation. Notice there's nothing weird going on with any of the variables. Um, however, each of these values has a correlative piece over here. So our values for our slope and for our y-intercept actually have real life meanings when it comes to writing and creating linear equations. The slope is what we call a rate of change. It tells us how something is happening um, relative to something else. Um, if you think of uh, normally our slope equation takes the y values and then finds the difference between them and then takes the x values and finds the difference between them. So we're looking at how y's change compared to how x's change. So if you are looking at a problem where there is something changing, that's going to be a great example of what our slope is. And we can put that value in for m. The y-intercept, if you think of a graph, happens when our input variable is equal to zero. So in many cases, our input variable is equal to the time So our y-intercept is going to be what's happening when our time is equal to zero, so when our situation starts. So if we can kind of think of the slope as um, the rate of change of how things are happening in the problem and the y-intercept as our starting value, then it becomes real simple to write an equation as we go through. In these cases, let's the first thing that you should always do when you're writing an equation or a function of any type is to identify your variables. We're going to have an input variable and an output variable. The input variable is almost always time. So in this case, our input variable is going to be the number of weeks she's been saving. The output variable is what we're trying to measure. And in this case, we're trying to measure the um, amount of money in her savings account. And the unit here would be in dollars. Uh, generally, I like to use x and y because that correlates really nicely with graphing, but you're welcome to use any variables that you like for your input and output variables. But it's important that you define them and very specifically define the units that are associated with it. The next problem here asks us to write a function in function notation. So what that means is if x is our input variable, we can label our function f of x, and then we want to write our rule. Our rule, we want to try to start with that y equals mx plus b. m is going to be the, um, the rate, so that's going to be a change of $60 a week, times by x, which is the number of weeks, plus our starting value, which was $420.
So this is going to be our function in function notation when this is our input variables. Once you have a function, you can use it to evaluate or find values. You can also use it to solve or make predictions. Uh, then the next question asks us, how much money will she have saved up after a year? Well, if X is the number of weeks, then one year means 52 weeks. So we can stick 52 into our function. F of 52 equals 60 times 52 plus 420. And then we can figure that out on our calculator. times 52 plus 420. So $3,540 is how much money Jordan will have saved after one year. This idea of being consistent with units is really important. In the last problem here, it says Jordan figures she'll need $5,000 to take the trip. How long would she need to solve or would she need to save up to have enough money? Here the question is asking us for how long, so we want to be solving for x. That's the piece of unknown that we don't have. We don't have the number of weeks. We do know that she will need to $5,000, so this is our output value. Um, so we can plug that into our equation here. $5,000 is going to be equal to 60x plus 420. And now it's just a simple linear equation that we can solve. Subtract 420 from each side, gives me 4,580, divide by 60 on each side. And let's see what we get when we do that. 4,580 divided by 60 gives me 76.33. So she would need to save for a total of 77 weeks in order to have enough money to go on her trip. Um, why 77? Um, if she only saved for 76, she wouldn't quite have enough money yet. So sometimes in these examples, it's a good idea to go ahead and round up because it makes more sense from a problem perspective. In problem number two here, we're kind of working the other way. This time they did give us a function and they're asking us to make and interpret some values here. In this case, we have John is a door-to-door -door vacuum salesman. His weekly salary is given by the linear function S of V equals 200 plus 50 V, where V is the number of vacuums sold. In this case, notice, let's go ahead and think about what our variables are for just a second. If we're dealing with a function, we're gonna have an input and an output. If you look at your function notation here, it's always f of our input. So our input in this case is v. And v, it reports, is the number of vacuums sold. Our output is s of v. And this is reported as his weekly salary. So knowing what those variables represent is helpful and important as we go through. The first part question here asks us to identify the slope and interpret its meaning. When we're looking at a linear function, the slope is always the number that comes in front of the variable. So in this case, my slope is equal to 50. Now, when we ask, are asked to interpret the meaning, really what we want to focus on here is making sure we understand what variables we have. If you think of the slope formula, we're looking at the change of the y or output values divided by the change in the input values. So if we come over and look at our input and output values over here, we can identify what the relationship of change is. In this particular case, um, our output value is his salary. So $50 is the change. And so let's make sure we think of this as a rate of change, right? 50 is the rate of change of his salary per vacuum sold. So what does that mean for us? In this case, if we're looking at 50 as how his salary is changing per, for each vacuum, we could say something like, John earns a $50 commission for every vacuum he sells.
The next question asks us to identify the vertical intercept. And remember, the vertical intercept is, if we're looking at y equals mx plus b as a function, uh, the y-intercept is what's that, that b value here. We said when we were looking, thinking about these in real life terms that a lot of, that this is often considered our starting value. Um, so in this case, we have, uh, so s of v equals 200 plus 50 v. This is our y-intercept, or our vertical intercept, is 200. Its units are always going to be uh, in terms of y. They're units of the output. What that means is we're talking about $200 salary. And what our meaning for the vertical intercept is, is when time equals zero, or in this, or whatever our input equals zero, in this case that's the number of vacuums, when zero vacuums are sold, John still makes $200. So we could say that John's base salary, for example, is $200, and then he earns a commission of $50 per vacuum. And you don't necessarily need the base salary and commission vocabulary, but you do need to see that uh, John is making $200 no matter what, and then he earns $50 for each vacuum that he sells as part of that, as part of that work adventure.